Welcome to the Israel of God Bible study class here in the UK. My name is Brother Tony P. I'll be your teacher today. And reading for us is our beloved brother, Tony S. And at this time, sisters and brothers, we ask our brothers to please cover your head, uncover your heads. And sisters, please cover your heads while we go ahead and get this show started. We're going to stand and face the east toward Jerusalem. Let's open up. Go ahead, brother. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As a smoke is driven away. As a smoke is driven away. So drive them away. So drive them away. As wax melted before the fire. As wax melted before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him that rideth upon the heavens. Exalt him that rideth upon the heavens. By his name, Jah. By his name, Jah. And rejoice before him. And rejoice before him. We just read Psalm 68, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my beloved brother Tony, and thank you again, sisters and brothers, for joining us this morning here at the Israel of God at the UK location. And sister and brothers, we do have a new location. We will be giving that to you momentarily, but at this time, we're going to go ahead and start with the reading of the law. So if you could, brother Tony, let's start at Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. We want to read verses 1 through 17. Exodus 20. 1 through 17. When you get it, my beloved brother, go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Yeah. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Thank you, Brother Tony. And that was the Ten Commandments that the Lord himself gave in person to Moses. And now let's get a second witness of this. Let's now go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we want to read verses 13 through 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14. So we saw what Moses had said, sister and brothers. Let's get a second witness of the wisest man who ever lived, King Solomon. Let's see what he says about the commandments. Go ahead, brother. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Amen. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And sister and brothers, this is the reason why we teach and keep the commandments, because the book teaches all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He's going to judge every man according to his work. Yes. Now, we read all this in the Old Testament. And just in case we have some New Testament Christians out there that believe that the law was done away with in the Old Testament, let's go to the very last book of the Bible, Revelation. In fact, we're going to go to the very last chapter, Revelation 22. And we'll, we like to always say, it don't get no more final than this. So let's see if we see anything about commandments in Revelation 22. If we do, then we need to take heed. Revelation 22, my beloved brother, let's read 14 and 15. Go ahead and read. 
Blessed are they that do his commandments, Amen. that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Go ahead. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So we see, sisters and brothers, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, the commandments are still in effect to this day because this is a salvation issue. You want to get into the kingdom of the Lord? Keep his commandments. Amen. Amen. So, sisters and brothers, again, this is the Israel of God UK. And now we have a new location we will be meeting at. And that location given to us by our beloved brother Mark is the Pavilion King Edward VI School, located five ways, Scotland Lane, in Bartley Green, Birmingham, B324BT. Once again, the Pavilion King Edward VI School, five ways, Scotland Lane, Bartley Green, Birmingham, b 324BT. We will go ahead and repeat that address before we close out the show. So, Sister and Brothers, let's go ahead and get into the lesson title. Today, we're going to deal with the lesson called What is His Name and What is His Son's Name? Once again, what is His Name and What is His Son's Name? And for the viewing audience and for my beloved brother Tone, the reason we did this lesson, Sister and Brothers, it was one, it was a request from my beloved brother Mark Azaria because it seems that this day you got a lot of people. They want to kick against the name of Jesus. What they say is that they lie. Let me say this. They lie and say that the name of Jesus is the exact same name, Zeus, if you go to the Greek language. But they can't substantiate that, so then they'll make up another fable. Then they'll turn around and say, well, Jesus means pig in the Latin language. Mm -hmm. That's another lie as well, mm -hmm. too, sisters and brothers. So what we want to do, we want to go ahead and look at the Bible. That's our true source of where we actually got the name of Jesus from. We're going to go into some reference materials as well, too. And we want to kill this lie that Jesus means either Zeus or pig or some other folly that brothers like to put on the table. And the thing about it, sister and brothers, we also want to see if you have to call on the name of the Lord in Hebrew in order to get some salvation. And we're going to see why we call the name of Jesus in English. And we're going to look to see what the name of the Lord was even in the Old Testament. So we could, Brother Tony, let's start this off at 2 Timothy chapter 2. I always like to start here because it's very relevant, even to this very day. 2 Timothy chapter 2, my beloved brother, we want to read verses 15 and 16, and then we will skip. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, and then we'll skip. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightfully dividing the word of truth. Go ahead. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more. I'm sorry. But shun profane and, va and vain babblings. Yes, sir. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. So what did he say right here in verse 15? He says, study to show yourself approved, a workman unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. So sisters and brothers, if you run into somebody that has a Bible in their hand, especially if they have the King James Bible in their hand and they want to tell you that they are an Israelite and they want to tell you that you are an Israelite, but then they turn around and when you see the name Jesus, they got a problem with it. You see the name Jehovah, they got a problem with it. But that's what they're telling you. They're telling you that this is not the word of truth. That's right. Because they're telling you that this is corrupted. And what always kills me, it's good enough to tell you that you are Israelite, but it's not good enough to tell you the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why would you even want to read this book, sister and brother? You might as well close this and deal with something else. Go ahead and read verse 16 again. But shun profane and vain babblings. Go ahead. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Profane and vain babblings trying to give you another name that's not even in the book that we're supposed to be reading for salvation. Verse number 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Go ahead. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. He says, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. He didn't say, let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from the English language. He said, let them part from the iniquity. And we know that iniquity is sin, and sin is a transgression of the law, sisters and brothers. Let's stay in 2 Timothy now and go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And sisters and brothers, we have to nail this point home because me and my brother Tony was talking earlier. You got too many people trying to eat from too many different tables. And the Lord tells you that all tables are not clean. They are full of vomit. That's Stick right. with the book. Genesis to Revelation. You can't go wrong. This is where you get your salvation from. But what happens is people got a problem with the name of Jesus. 
They got a problem with the name of Jehovah. They even got a problem with the name Lord God and everything else that you can read in the book. They want to close this and give you some other source or some other internet name that they found this week. And they want to tell you, this is the name that we got to call on. And if you believe that, like I said, this book right here is no longer the word of truth. It's corrupted. You might as well put it down. But let's see what he tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we got 13. But let's start at verse 12 because this is timely as well. We're going to read 12 through 17. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In fact, if you even say the word Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in English, you're going right. to suffer some persecution. And you read it right out the book. Go ahead. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They wax and worse and worse each and every year, sister and brothers. And believe me, for the last 20, 25 years, it seems every year they come up with a brand new original name. Mm -hmm. How do you have something brand new and original and it changes every year for the last 20 or 30 years? Because we're going to see some of those names momentarily just so y'all don't think that I'm making nothing up. But it says evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse in these latter days, deceiving people because mm -hmm. they themselves are being deceived. Right. Go ahead, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Stick with the books, sisters and brothers. You can't go wrong with sticking with the Holy Bible. This is our salvation. Go ahead. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in, G in Christ Jesus. So what did uh, Paul tell Timothy? Stick with the scriptures because mm -hmm. they are able to make you wise into salvation. But what people are doing nowadays, Brother Tom, they throwing the book away, closing right. it, and they going on the internet. Mm -hmm. The internet will not make you wise to salvation depending on where you go. It can get you cut off. Because you got brothers on the internet that's telling you now that the Sabbath is not the seventh day of the week, but the Sabbath starts with each every new moon. Mm -hmm. And they give you a rotating lunar salad, uh, Sabbath. So you don't want to go on the internet to get some understanding, sister, brother. Stick with the book. The book tells you in Genesis second chapter, the Lord blessed the seventh day. It didn't say that he blessed the new moon and every seven days after that. Stick with the book. It gives you salvation. Go ahead, verse, what, did you finish 15? Yeah. Read 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Again, he's always bringing you back to the Holy Bible. All mm -hmm. scripture given for by God mm -hmm. for Profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. And guess what? Even the name of the Lord. Yes. Go ahead, 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. So you stick with the book, sisters and brothers. You can't go wrong. Now, we read two scriptures in Timothy. Let's go to Peter, Apostle Peter, another righteous man of the Lord. And let's see what the Holy Spirit inspired our beloved brother Peter to write. Second Peter, the first chapter. Second Peter chapter one. And like we always do, sisters and brothers, give you a little foundation scriptures here while we build up the lesson. And then we're gonna get into the meat of this. And we got some slides we want to show you too. Second Peter chapter one, my beloved brother. And let's read verses one through three. Second Peter chapter one, verses one through three. Whenever you get it, go ahead and read. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Christ of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So for that word faith, sister and brothers, that is the key component to us having some understanding. In other words, do you have faith in what you read with your own eyes? Two and three. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Go ahead. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Did y'all just hear what the brother read in verse 3? Mm -hmm. He says, according to the Lord's divine power, mm -hmm. he gave us all things, not a few things, not some corrupt things, right. not some things that somebody took away from us mm -hmm. that we got to search and find. He said he gave us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. Mm -hmm. And we have all things that pertain to knowledge and salvation. Guess what? We even have the names of the Father and the names of the Son, which is actually the same name. We pronounce that same name in English. We're going to read that to you momentarily. But again, in order to have that understanding, you have to have faith in the God that you serve. Because what they'll do, Brother Tom, 
is they'll look at verse two, which you read in the English. They'll read it from the KJV and they'll read it just like this or some kind of variation. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Yahweh, 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 through Yahweh Shai, I say. That's what they do. I'm like, brother, what are you reading? I thought we were reading from the KJV. Mm -hmm. But the books is telling us we're going to read this later on. Don't add to it and don't take away from it. Read it as it's written, sister and brothers. It's above all of our pay grade. Well, let's continue, my beloved brother. Let's go now to St. John, the fifth chapter. St. John chapter 5. And again, sisters and brothers, my name is Tony. My brother Reed is Tone Bone. In the vernacular, we just substitute for our beloved brother Mark this week. We appreciate y'all waking up and keeping the Sabbath with us over here in the U.S. and across the pond, whatever time it is over there. We truly appreciate and love each and every one of y'all. And we pray that this lesson edifies y'all. St. John chapter 5, my beloved brother. Let's read verses 37 through 39. Then we're going to do some skipping. St. John chapter 5. We want to read 37 through 39. And then we will skip. Whenever you get it, my beloved brother, go ahead and read. And the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So the Lord said, the Father that sent him, we never heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. But wait a minute. You had somebody that was in the Old Testament that was dealing with Adam, that was dealing with Noah, that was dealing with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and all the patriarchs. Well, who was that? Well, mm -hmm. Christ just told you right here, that wasn't the father. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to see who that was momentarily. Go ahead, verse number 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent him ye believe not. So you don't even believe the son because the father sent the son and you don't even believe him. You don't even believe his name can be translated or transliterated in any language, even English. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse 39. Search the scriptures. Now, my brother read that wrong. He should have said search the internet. Mm -hmm. What do he say? Search the scriptures. Search the Bible. Go ahead. For in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Again, this is the fourth time we read that we got to do what? Search the scripture because that's where you have salvation. That's right. You don't have to close the book, sister and brothers, mm -hmm. and go to the Strong's, go to the Blue Letter, go to some the Saurus of Reference book to try to find out what the true name of the Savior is or the true name of the Father. It's in this Holy Bible that we got in our hands right now. If you don't believe it, that's because you ain't got no faith. Skip down to verse number 43. I am coming in my father's name. Now, the son is telling you that he came in his father's name. So guess what? The son and the father have the exact same yes. name. Yes. Period. Point. Go ahead. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Go ahead. How can ye believe which receive honor of another and seek not to honor that and, to, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Go ahead. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Even Moses, in whom ye trust. So why is Moses going to accuse him? Verse 46 and 47. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. So if you would have believed the writings of Moses, you would have mm -hmm. believed Christ. Why? For he wrote of me. So Moses wrote of Christ, and we're about to read that next scripture. Go ahead. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye? If you don't believe the Old Testament. How can you call yourself a New Testament Christian? Because Christ, everything that he said, he always said, it is written. It is written. Have you not read? Mm -hmm. Have you not read? Well, let's go ahead and read some of Moses' writing. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go to Genesis, the fourth chapter now. Because everybody always want to play the name game. I got a question for them. I've been asking this question for years. I have yet to get an answer. Maybe Brother Tom will get an answer today. <laughs> let's go to Genesis, the fourth chapter. And this is after... Uh, Cain had killed his brother Abel, and then the Lord was going to bless Adam and Eve with another son. Genesis, the fourth chapter, my brother, and we want to read 25 and 26. Genesis chapter 4, 26. Again, go ahead and read. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son. In Christ. For God said she has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So the Lord gave Adam and Eve, now his name was Seth. Go ahead, in verse 26. And to, and to Seth, to him also was born a son, and he called his name Enoch. Then began, then began, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. It says, 
breath of the son, he called him Enos. And at the last part of that verse, it says, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So the million dollar question we put on the table, what name did they call him? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to even ask you what language that was because I don't mm -hmm. want to confuse y'all. Mm -hmm. What name did they call him? Since you claim to know the name of this, that, and whatever, well, what name did they call him, sister? That's a question in the air. So somebody want to play the game, take him back right here to see if I'm saying no. But you know, the thing about it, it don't quit. So let's go to Genesis, the 17th chapter. Genesis chapter 17. That was before the flood. Let's go after the flood with our father, Abraham. Let's see what Abraham called the Lord. Now, remember, we already read in Genesis, uh, John, the fifth chapter, that Christ said, we never heard the father's voice to seen his shape at any time. But somebody's about to speak to Abraham right now. It ain't the father. Then the question is, who is it? We're going to answer that momentarily, too. But let's deal with it. Genesis 17, and let's read verses 1 through 2. When you get it, my beloved brother, go ahead and read. And when you're 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abraham. And said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So we're here to Abraham, who was 99 years old. He says, walk before me and be perfect. And he says, I am the almighty God. So we got a name on the table. The almighty God, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. When people play the name game, Brother Tom, don't nobody bring this name up. And you can read it right out the book. That's right. He says, I'm the almighty God. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Go ahead, verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. He says he's going to make his covenant between him and Abraham and multiply him exceedingly. But he put a name on the table. He says, Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at some another name here. Let's go now to Exodus, the third chapter. Now we're going to deal with the lawgiver of Moses. Let's see what he called himself when he dealt with Moses. And again, Christ the Son says, You never heard the Father's voice, and he's seen his shape. But somebody spoke to Abraham and called himself God Almighty. And let's look at another name here. Exodus chapter 3, my beloved brother. And let's read, if we could, verse number 6. Verse 6, and then we're going to skip. When you get it, go ahead and read. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he says, got another name here. Finish that. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So we got another name on the table. First, we got God Almighty. Now we got another name, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And again, for all those that want to play the name game, how can nobody call them on that name, Tomo? Mm -hmm. You never hear them say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But let's get another name on the tape, since y'all like playing with names. Stay in verse uh, chapter 3, Exodus 3, and let's read 14, let's start at verse 13. We're going to read 13 through 15. Go ahead and read, brother. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they will say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? So that's a good question that Moses asked the Lord. He says, when I come into the children of Israel and they ask the name of the God of our forefathers, what name should I give them? Let's see if you're going to read one of these Internet names that these brothers try to throw at you each and every week. Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Go ahead. And he said. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Now we got a third name on the table. First we had God Almighty. Now we got God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now we got the I am. He says the I am, the I am have sent me unto you. Three different names we got here, sisters and brothers. But guess what? When folks are arguing about the name, they never made mention these three names. Why? Because the Lord didn't send them. They speak out of their own vain imagination. Go ahead and read 15, if you will, my brother. And God said, moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. He said, this is my name forever. Go ahead. And this, my, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So that is his name forever, and that's his memorial unto all generations. Why are y'all closing the book and going to the internet mm -hmm. to try to get a new name that ain't nobody ever heard of before, but you want to try to tell me that the name of the Lord is Yahweh, mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai, Yahqua, Yahuwah, or whatever else you saw from the internet. Mm -hmm. He just read 60, 15 again. I don't think they heard you in the back. So these are for the brothers that can't hear in the back. Turn up your TV and let's read it again. Verse 15. And God said moreover unto Moses. Yes, sir. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, 
has sent me unto you. Amen. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Amen. So we got about four names on the table, sister and brother. Let's go ahead and put some more on there. Let's go to Exodus the sixth chapter now. Exodus chapter six. We want to read verses two and three. Mm -hmm. And there's a method to our madness, sister and brothers. Why are we going through all this? Because what we did we do, sister and brothers? We had the book open and Brother Tone read it and you read along with him. But then when somebody you meet on the corner or somebody you meet on social media or online want to argue you with you about the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and tell you you can't call on Jesus because ain't no J's in Hebrew, they're not going to do what we just did and read what thus said the Lord in a language that you understand. Now you read and read four different names right here and we still only in the second book of the Bible, Exodus chapter 2. The Lord knows what he's doing. It's just that we don't know what we're doing. That's right. And that's why we always trying to question stuff. And that's why we always get everything all jacked up. Exodus, the sixth chapter, my beloved brother. And let's read two and three. When you get it, go ahead and read. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. There's another name, the Lord. They don't like the name of the Lord, but we read it in the book. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Hold on, Tom. Didn't we already read that in Genesis mm -hmm. 17? He appeared to uh, Abraham as an almighty God, a God mm -hmm. Almighty. He reiterated it. He said, I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But here's another name. Go ahead. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Now he gave him another name. He said, but by my name, Jehovah. Was I not known unto them? That's right. And that's why we read that Genesis, the fourth chapter, verses 24 and 25 earlier, because some people will try to insert that in the Bible. It says, Adam and his sons knew him by the name of Jehovah. But the Lord just said right here, none of the patriarchs knew him by that name. They knew him by God Almighty, but he revealed that name Jehovah unto Moses. So be careful who you listen to out here, sisters and brothers, and let them read it to you directly out the book. Now, you might have some brothers in TV land scratching their head with attitude. Some of them, well, Brother Tom, it can't be Jehovah because mm -hmm. ain't no James in Hebrew. So that ain't his original name. Let's look at something here. We're going to stay in Exodus. And let's go to Exodus 34. Exodus chapter 34. And again, we only in two books. We read all these different names from two books, from Genesis and Exodus. But this is the last place we're going to go right here. Exodus the 34th chapter, my beloved brother. We're going to read one verse, verse 14. Exodus chapter 34. For all these no J's out here, I call them the no J's. Y'all heard of the mm -hmm. singing group, the OJs? Mm -hmm. I call them the no J's. And they make no sense whatsoever. So they're going to say, ain't no J's in Hebrew, so his name can't be Jehovah. We'll explain his name. Exodus 34 and 14. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous. His name is what? Jealous. What does Jealous start with? J. Uh oh, go ahead. Is a jealous God. So wait a minute. If ain't no J's in the Hebrew and his name can't be Jehovah, he just told you that his name is jealous. And he said, don't have no other gods before him because he's a jealous God. Do you need to go and see what the Hebrew word of that is? No, because you understand what it means in English. Jealous, don't have no other gods before him, sister and brothers. So for all the no J's out there, he said his name was jealous. How do you get that? Can't get it, sister and brothers. Now, we want to go and get another uh, slide here. Brother Eric, put the slide up. We want to mm -hmm. see what is his name in the Old Testament. Okay. okay. So let's get this slide up. You got to go to the first one. I think uh, those are the, the end ones. Go away to the first one. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Boy, you can go ahead and do it now. Put the slide up. So with this slide is called, uh, Brother Eric, what is his name in the Old Testament? Y'all give us a second, sister and brothers, because I want y'all to see this. We read all these earlier, but I wanted to put these up so y'all can get a visual of these. When ASAP sent them out, it should be the, uh, well, maybe it's the last one on yours, uh, Brother Eric. No, no, it's, uh, it's, it should say, what is his name in the OT? Keep going. Yeah, I think you have to go backwards and start it. Uh, go backwards and then start it, uh, the first one. So you say, what is his name in OT? It starts with God Almighty. There you go. That's it. So, sister and brothers in TV land, if y'all can read this slide, and we called these names out earlier, but this is a question I always want to ask too. It says, what is his name in the Old Testament? So, we read the name God Almighty. We read the name, the God of Abraham, 
Isaac, and Jacob, we read the name I am that I am. We read the name Jehovah, it starts with a J, and we also read the name Jealous, that starts with a J. So here's the thing, and this is the challenge to the people in TV land and view the audience too, they got a, that's kicking against any name that we read in the Bible. Can they go in the Bible and just read that one name that they're saying this is the name? Because nine times, well, I say 99 times out of 100, they got the KJV right there in the hand with them. It's right there. But they won't read that name because it's not in the KJV. And, 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 and how come you don't read God Almighty? How can we even read the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How come you don't read the I am that I am? How come you don't read the Jehovah that starts with a J? And how come you don't read the Jealous that starts with a J? Now, if you want to throw Yahweh in there, I'm not going to argue that with you. But I read Jehovah in the book. And what we read earlier, the first song that Brother Tom Bone read, he read the word job, which starts with a J. So what y'all doing is picking and choosing, sister and brothers. And the book says that the Lord hates uh, unrighteous balance. You got to read the book as it is, sister and brothers, and let it fall where it may. We got another slide here. Can you bring up the next slide, uh, Brother Eric? It's a Compact Bible Dictionary, Jehovah. Next slide, Compact Bible Dictionary, Jehovah. Not that, it was the Compact Bible Dictionary, page 270. Y'all give us a second, sister and brothers, while we get these technical uh, things worked out. Compact Bible Dictionary. The one before that, uh, Eric, that's Jesus. The one before that should be one that says Jehovah. It's Compact Bible Dictionary. Not that one, brother. Compact Bible Dictionary, page 270. Give us one second, Sister Rhodes. That's how you know we live in the fact. Amen. <laughs> With the Compact Bible Dictionary, 270. And it should say, uh, not that one. It looks like that one, Eric. But it says Jehovah. Compact Bible Dictionary, 270. I know we had to switch the slides up. Um, give us one second, you all. If you can't find it, Eric, that's okay. We'll go ahead and just read it. So, uh, well, don't worry about it, Eric, just for time's sake. We'll go ahead and read it. But, sister and brothers, we are reading from the Compact Bible Dictionary, page 270. And this is the uh, definition of Jehovah. Compact Bible <coughs> Dictionary, Jehovah. All right. What does it say, brother? The English re 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 rendition of the Hebrew tetragram Yahweh, one of the names of God. So the Jehovah, according to the Bible dictionary, is the English rendition of the Hebrew tetragrammaton YWHW, because there's no vowels in the Hebrew. And it says that Jeho this is only one of the names of God. We read five of the names earlier. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What else does it say? Its original pronunciation is unknown. So guess what? For all those that want to throw out the mm -hmm. four-letter tetragrammaton with you and they want to throw some vowels or whatever in there, mm -hmm. it says the original pronunciation is unknown. So any other name that you got, sisters and brothers, that is an English variation or an English transliteration mm -hmm. of the original Hebrew name. That's why I can't understand why brothers always want to argue what that name is. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a Y or a J, the original pronunciation, according to the history mm -hmm. book, is unknown. But go ahead and read that last part. In the KJV, the name Lord occurs instead of Jehovah. So in the KJV Bible, instead of Jehovah, the word of the, the name Lord is occur. And Brother Eric, if you hit slide number four, it says which name? I think you brought it up earlier. I think the first one starts with yeah. Yes, sir, that one. So, sisters and brothers in TV land, if you can view this slide, then my question is which name? If there's no uh, known pronunciation of the so-called tetragrammaton. Okay, yeah, all right, Brother Eric finally brought it up. So, yeah, so this is what he we just read, sisters and brothers, Jehovah. The English rendition of the Hebrew Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, one of the names of God. The original pronunciation is unknown. And in the KJV, the name of the Lord occurs instead of Jehovah. But go ahead and put up that other slide that you just had up, Brother Eric, so that we have a question of which name. Yes, sir. So if the original name is unknown, what name are we reading? 
Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Y-H-W-H or Y-H-V-H. You got another name, Ahia, and you got another name, Yahovah. Since they don't like the J, they're going to put a Yahovah in it. Wait a minute. If we don't know the original pronunciation of the Y-H-W-H of Tetragrammaton, if somebody comes to you and say one of these names or any other name they found out is the right name or the correct name, ask them one question. Can you prove that? Can you read it? They're going to say no. They leave them alone. I'm not going to argue these names. I'm not going to disrespect any of these names. I just have to take your word for it, but that's not the name that I read in the books of certain brothers. Now let's go to Isaiah 57 chapter. Let's go back to the scriptures now. Isaiah chapter 57. And so, some brothers, thank you all for your patience. While we get our technical glitches worked out, we want to make sure that y'all see what we see so y'all don't think that we're making anything up. Now, let's go back to the scriptures. The book says to the law and to the testimony. So, now we're going to deal with the prophets. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 57, we're going to just read one verse, verse 15. Isaiah 57, and one verse 15. When you get it, go ahead and read. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. So this is one speaking, the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity. Go ahead. Whose name is holy. We got another name here. He said his name is holy. Holy don't start with no J. How come you don't like that name? Go ahead. I dwell in the high and holy place with him with also. Him. Go ahead. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So the Lord says, I inhabit eternity. My name is holy and I dwell mm -hmm. in the high and holy place with him. That's right. That means you got two individuals mm -hmm. with him of a contrite and humble spirit. So you got two individuals that inhabit eternity. One is known as the father. Mm -hmm. One is known as the son. And the son already told you in the gospel of St. John that you never dealt with the father. That's right. So all these names that we just read and all the people that we just read about, or all the uh, beings we just read about in Exodus and Genesis, that's the one known as the son, sister and brothers. Mm -hmm. His name was Jehovah when he was in his heavenly glory. When he came in the flesh, he came in a different name. And we'll read that momentarily. But let's now go to Psalms, the 30th chapter. And this is where we got our title lesson from. Oh, Proverbs, excuse me. Thank you, brother. Proverbs chapter 30. That's why we have readers to keep us in line. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate that, my brother. Proverbs chapter 30. We want to read verses 4 through 6. Proverbs, the 30th chapter. The wise man who ever lived, King Solomon. Give him some credit. Let's see what he has to say. We already read Prophet Isaiah said you have two that inhabit eternity. Now we're going to put some titles on them. I gave it to you, but let's read it ourselves. Psalms, excuse me, Proverbs 30, 4 and 5. And you get it? What does it say, brother? Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? What is his name? And what is his son's name? What is his son's name? If thou canst tell. If thou can tell. You can't tell because all you got to do is read the books. Mm -hmm. brothers. We gave you a whole list of names earlier. We got some more we're going to read to you. Go ahead, verse number 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. See, the book says every word of God is pure. But then you got people online and on social media telling you that the word of God is corrupt because ain't no J's in Hebrew, which it shows how hypocritical they are, Brother Tone, because mm -hmm. they ain't got no problem with the name of Joseph and with the J. That's right. They ain't got no problem with the name Jacob, which starts with the J, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They ain't got a problem with uh, St. John that starts with a J. They definitely ain't got a problem with Jerusalem, where everybody's trying to move back to. That starts with a J. But yet, when it comes to Jesus and Jehovah, now all of a sudden, that J is evil and that J is wicked. What does the Bible say? A double-minded man is what? I'm staying on all of his ways. Yeah. Can't have it both ways. If J is wicked, throw it out all together and just start using everywhere with a J, put a Y or an I in front of it. That's right. They're not going to do all that, sister brothers. They might do it while they're online trying to sound smart, but they're not going to do that in real life. But let's continue. He says, every word of the Lord is pure. Go ahead, verse 6. Add thou not unto his words. He said, don't add nothing to his words. Go ahead. Lest he, uh, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Amen. He says, uh, add not to his words, mm -hmm. lest he reprove you, and you be found a liar. Right. So when somebody's reading this Bible out of their hand in English, but they want to uh, add some words to it, they want to give you their own private interpretation, the word says don't add to the word. Lest you be found a liar and the Lord reproves you. 
to hear the word of the Lord alone, sisters and brothers. It's perfect the way it is. One more place here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We said it earlier, but let's go ahead and let the book tell us. Because again, Christ said, you never heard the Father's voice nor seen his shape. Yet, we got all the Exodus and Genesis. What is being is saying, his name is God Almighty. His name is Jehovah, the Lord, mm -hmm. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the I am, this, that, whatever. Well, if that wasn't the Father speaking, who was it speaking? Let, let Paul tell us. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. When you get it, blood, go ahead and read it. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Amen. And all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So he's talking about our fathers and Moses. Go ahead. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Go ahead. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was who? Was Christ. So it was the son, sister and brothers in his heavenly glory because you had the father and son mm -hmm. that inhabit eternity. The son is the one that was dealing with mankind because he said you never heard the father's voice right. or seen the shape at any time. So anybody back there in the Old Testament that called himself the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. the I am, God Almighty, that was the one known as his son, sisters and brothers. And let him tell you, if you don't believe us, uh, this wasn't a lesson. Let's go real quickly to St. John, the eighth chapter. St. John, the eighth chapter. Because he's going to give you one of those names that we had already read. St. John 8, my beloved brother, we're going to read verses 56 through 58. St. John chapter 8, 56 through 58. Hope y'all don't mind. We pause and take a quick uh, uh, pit stop, but we're still in the book. Mm -hmm. St. John 8, 56 to 58. What does it say, brother? Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He said Abraham rejoiced to see his day. Why? Go ahead. And he saw it and was glad. He saw his day and he was glad. Go ahead. Then the, Jew, then the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Don't you start with the J. <laughs> he ain't got a problem with you mm -hmm. Judah. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham, before Abraham was. Hold on. He said, wait a minute. They told him, man, you ain't even 50 years old. How mm -hmm. is it that you've seen Abraham? Because he said, Father Abraham rejoiced to see his day. Mm -hmm. He saw Abraham back in Genesis 17 when he says, I'm God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But let him tell you this also. He says, before Abraham was, what did he say? I am. He says, I am. Then he tell Moses in Exodus, the third chapter, that I am is one of my names, the I am that I am. Yes. So that's him, sister and brothers. He's telling you who he was, and they didn't believe him. And they don't believe him to this very day, to the point now that they want to argue about the J in mm -hmm. his name. Let's go to a couple more places, my beloved brother. Did we read? I think I missed something. Let's go to uh, Psalms 118. I did miss something. Yes, sir. Psalms 118. I gotta read this. Because he said in Jer uh, St. John, the fifth chapter, he came in his father's name. Mm -hmm. So we want to read a second witness of it again. You gotta read the law and the testimony. Psalms chapter 118. Psalms chapter 118. We want to read verse 22. And then we're gonna skip to 26. Psalms 118 and 22. What does it say, brother? The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. That's Jesus Christ. The stone which the builder refused mm -hmm. has become the cornerstone. And he's going to smash you if you ain't right with him. Skip verse 26. Go ahead. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He says, blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He said, I come in my father's name mm -hmm. and you receive him out. But he said, blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. Go ahead. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. And this is a perfect segue because he mm -hmm. came in the name of the Lord when he came in the flesh. Well, let's take a look at the name he came in when he came in the flesh. We saw the name he had in his heavenly glory. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Numbers 13th chapter and see what name he came in when he was flesh and blood. All you got to do, sisters and brothers, is walk through the book. If they got a problem with what's being written. They got a problem with the Lord and how he had his prophets write it down. So let's read the book to them so they can't say they didn't hear it. Numbers chapter 13, this is when Moses sent out the 12 spies. To search the land of Canaan for 40 years, one uh, spy from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. We're going to take a look at one of the names of these brothers. Moses, chapter, excuse me, Moses. <laughs> Numbers chapter 13, <laughs> praise the Lord, verse 3. When you get it, brother, what does it say? And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. So he sent these 12 spies out, and we're going to just look at the name on one of them. What's verse 8 say? Verse 8. 
of the tribe of Ephraim, O'Shea, the son of Nun. So from the tribe of Ephraim, he sent out his brother called O'Shea, the son of Nun, mm -hmm. but he gave O'Shea a different name. Let's get mm -hmm. down to verse 16, if you would. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called O'Shea, the son of Nun, Joshua. The read that has to say, bro. Joshua. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Je 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 Jeho Jehoshua. Jehoshua, yes, sir. So I had to read that because mm -hmm. that's how I was reading in the book. So he called O'Shea, the son of Nun, by the name of Jehoshua. Mm -hmm. But he already told you who this was. Let the book tell you. Go to the next chapter, Numbers 14. And we're going to read verse 6. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 6. So we got another name on the table right now. Jehoshua, the mm -hmm. son of Nun. Yeah. You might not be familiar with that name, but I'm sure you're familiar with this variation. Mm -hmm. uh, Numbers 14 and verse 6. When you get it, go ahead and read. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Jif yes, which were of them that scattered the land, rent their clothes. So these brothers, Joshua and Caleb, uh, searched the land and they mm -hmm. rent their clothes because the brothers brought back an evil report. But the reason we went here is to show you that another name for the brother Nun, his son was called Joshua. So you got Jehoshua and you got Joshua. Mm -hmm. And the reason we go on here, sisters and brothers, I hope we don't sound redundant because you got brothers that teach that whatever name you call in the quote unquote Hebrew name of the Lord, that name has to be that name. It doesn't vary, it has no variations or whatever, whatever, which makes absolutely no sense. Because my name is Anthony, his name is Anthony, and guess what else they call us? Tony. Yes. So yes. if somebody came in this room right now and said, hey, Tony, both of us will turn up and look, because that's mm -hmm. both of our names. Mm -hmm. So sister and brother's names can't have variations, but let me give you another variation. Let's go to Nehemiah the 8th chapter now. No. So you got Jehoshua, you got Joshua, and now we want to go to the book of Nehemiah. Uh, book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 8. We're going to read one verse, verse 17. Book of Nehemiah, chapter 8. And we're going to read one verse, 17. So you got this brother, he was called Jehoshua. Mm -hmm. He was called Joshua, same name, just a variation of the name. We're going to give you one more variation. Uh, numbers 8 and 17. You get it, my beloved brother? Go ahead and read. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of, out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, Jeshua yes, sir. the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. Now you got a third name on the table, mm -hmm. sister and brothers, another variation of the name Joshua. It's called Joshua. Because this was written when they came back from the um, the um, Assyrian capti Babylonian captivity. And instead of speaking Hebrew, they were speaking Aramaic, which is a different version. Mm -hmm. But this name is Jeshua. So let's see if we could, brother. Can you bring up the next slide that says variations of the same name? That should be slide number five. Variations of the same name. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. So if y'all look in TV land, it says variations of the same name. This is before that. Uh, after that. After the. Before that. Before that. No. After that. Yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So variations of the same name. So now we got a couple names on the table. Read that first name if you could, bro. Je 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 Jehoshua. Jehoshua. You read that one. Go ahead. Joshua. You read Joshua. Go ahead. Jeshua. You read that one. Go ahead. And look Jesus. what all these names come to, sister and brother. Jesus. Jesus. So somebody tells you that Jesus means Zeus or it means pig or it means some other blasphemous thing. Mm -hmm. Just show them this right here. And you see how this name is the Greek English name of what originally was in the Hebrew Aramaic. There's nothing sinister about that system, brothers. You can't find no paganism in it mm -hmm. because names do translate or they do transliterate in different languages. You got from Jehoshua to Joshua, mm -hmm. you got from Joshua to Jeshua, you got from Jeshua to Jesus. And we're gonna mm -hmm. show you in a minute how Jesus came about. So in fact, let's go to Matthew, the first chapter. Let's deal with the name of Jesus now. All you got to do, sister and brother, you got to argue with nobody. Just let the book speak for itself. If you got some history or some reference, bring that out too. But most, 99% of the time, you want to stick with the Bible because you can never, ever go wrong with what thus said the Lord. The problem is when you get outside the Bible, you want to start bringing up all these other books and whatever else. 
then you find yourself getting into trouble. Matthew chapter 1, and let's look at verse number 18. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. When you get it, my beloved brother, go ahead and read. Now the birth, the birth of Jesus Christ was on was on the wise. Go ahead. When, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So wait a minute. And the reason I had to read this is because you got a lot of brothers, not all, but a lot of brothers that kick against the name of Jesus want to turn around and tell you that Joseph mm -hmm. was Jesus' biological father. So you know if they had the name Jesus wrong, you know they're going to get this wrong. Sure. So he just said right here, he says, before they came together, Mm -hmm. She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. So next time you went into one of these so-called ghetto scholars, one of these Einsteins on the corner on social media, mm -hmm. they want to tell you that Joseph was the birth father of Jesus Christ, ask him one question. If Joseph was a righteous man mm -hmm. and he knew that was his child, then why did he want to put away Mary? That's right. Mm-hmm. It's silent out there in TV land because you got them brothers out there doing they want to do a rebuttal lesson, but all them pins just dropped when I asked that question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask it again. If Joseph was a righteous man and he knew Jesus was his natural son and he knew Mary wasn't dealing with nobody else, then why would he want to put the sister away? He wanted to put her away because he knew he didn't lay with her. He knew that was somebody else's child mm -hmm. and the angel had to come down and tell him who the child belonged to. Go ahead, verse number 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So he told him, cancel that call to Mari Polish. Mm -hmm. You don't need no paternity test. Mm -hmm. That child belongs to the Holy Ghost. That's right. Go ahead and marry the sister she won with no other man. Verse 21, and the angel about to give him the name to call the son. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Call his name what? Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. And sisters and brothers, the good thing I like about this Bible, it defines itself and it interprets itself. If you don't know what a word means, nine times out of ten, the Bible will explain it for you. So he said, you shall bring forth a son, call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. So the Bible right now is telling you what Jesus means. It don't mean pig. It don't mean Zeus. It means Savior or salvation. That's right. That's what the name Jesus means. Mm -hmm. Brother Tony P., how do you know that? Let the Bible speak for itself. That's Verse right. 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Go ahead. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Call his name what? Emmanuel. Go ahead. Which being interpreted is... God with us. See, then we just say that the Bible interprets itself. Mm -hmm. He says she's going to bring forth the son. And he quoted Isaiah 7, 14. And they're going to bring forth the son and call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God is with us. Mm -hmm. So I ask your brothers that kick against the name Jesus. Hey, man, what does Emmanuel mean? Because if you go to Isaiah 7, 14, where they quoted this from, it don't tell you a definition of Emmanuel. They're going to come right here to Matthew, the first chapter. Hey, man, Emmanuel means God is with us. You're right, brother, because you read that from the book. That's right. So if Matthew, the first chapter, can tell you that Emmanuel means God is with us, how can you can't believe it when it says Jesus means he going to save his people from his sins? Mm -hmm. You can't have it both ways, sister brothers. Either deal with the book or throw it all away and become a Buddhist or something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and read 23 again. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Yes, sir. And they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. So Emmanuel means God is with us. Mm -hmm. Jesus means Savior and salvation. Go ahead, 24 and 25. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. So he obeyed. And, Go ahead. And took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. That was not his son. Go ahead. And he called his name Jesus. And he did what the angel said and called his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, if we could, let's go back to the slides now. Slide six, Compact Bible Dictionary. And now we want to take a look at Jesus. Amen. And for those in TV land, you see it on the screen. Compact Bible Dictionary, page 106. And I appreciate uh, Brother Asaph for hooking these up. Compact Bible Dictionary, page 106. And what does it say the name Jesus mean? Let's see if it means pig or Zeus or anything like that. What's mm -hmm. the, the history book say? Go ahead, brother. In the Greek, it says, Aesus. So Aesus, Aesus, that's Jesus, that's some Greek word. Go ahead, what does it mean in Hebrew? Jeshua. Go ahead. 
Joshua, J Jeshua, Jehoshua, Joshua. Amen. We read all three of those in the Bible. So in the Greek, it's Jesus or Jesus. In the Hebrew, it's Jeshua, Jehoshua, or Joshua. What does the name mean? Go ahead. Name means Jehovah is salvation. Just read that right out of Matthew. He will save his people from his sin. It means Savior or salvation. Jehovah is salvation. Mm -hmm. So anybody got a problem with the name of Jesus, just take him right here to any dictionary. It's not going to say pig. It's not going to say Zeus. It ain't going to say no blasphemous word. It's going to tell you exactly where it came from in the Greek and the Hebrew. It's going to tell you what it means in plain English. The Lord Jehovah is salvation. Mm -hmm. So let's continue, my beloved brother. We got a few more sisters and brothers. It don't take that long to bust up bad doctrine. Mm -hmm. Let's go now to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Let me get there with you. Hold on. My sister and brothers, I pray this is making sense. Let me pause for a station break. We had an Israel of God Bible study class. We are located here in the United Kingdom. Um, you can reach us at uh, our main website, www.theisraelofgod.com. We do have a Facebook page, social media page, The Israel of God UK United Kingdom. Definitely come on out to the new address uh, when they are up and running. Brother Mark, would love to see you. We'd love to have you. We'd love to chop it up with you. Bring your Bibles, pencils, and papers, and just have some, uh, just open, have an open ear to hear what thus said the Lord. Because our motto is, like my beloved brother Julius always says, if you can't read it, don't believe it. Don't believe it. So if somebody going to come to you and say, well, his name ain't Jesus. It's this, that, and whatever. Have, where, where's that in the Bible? If it ain't in the Bible, you can't read it out the Bible, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Do yourself a favor. Don't believe it. Ain't nothing wrong with the name of Jesus, sisters and brothers. Ain't nothing wrong with the letter J. Ain't nothing wrong with what the English language is because the Lord is the one who created all of the languages at the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. He scattered us until all the languages speaking the languages of everybody else. And the book tells us, I believe, in Zephaniah, he's going to return us back to a pure language. So don't think that what they're speaking right now is a pure language. It is a corrupted language mixed with Yiddish and all other Germanic languages, what they call Hebrew. Because our forefathers is not speaking it right now. Our uncles and our aunties are not speaking it right now. We are getting it from our twin brother Esau, who calls himself a Jew. He is the one speaking this quote unquote Hebrew language, which is really Yiddish. But let's continue, my beloved brother. Where are we at? First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, verse yes, 21. Sir. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 21. It's going to be verse 21. What does it say, brother? Prove all things. Prove what? Prove all things. Go ahead. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things, sister and brothers. Hold fast that which is good. That's what we said before. You can't read it. Don't believe it. Somebody going to tell you that his name is not Jesus. It's Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. But they got the KJV Bible in their hand. One question. Brother, where do you read Yahweh Shai at? And I'm not telling you something that I'm just making up, sister and brothers. We was on Clubhouse, I believe, earlier this year or late last year. We was in one of the Israel God rooms. And the brother came in. He was polite. But he called himself trying to teach us. He gave us some name. I don't know what name he got from. He said, well, the true name of the Lord in Hebrew is this, that, and whatever, whatever. And he gave a little spiel. We let him talk for a good 5, 10, 15 minutes. He was bringing up this strong concordance. He was bringing up blue letter Bible, this, that, whatever. And when I got on the mic, I asked him one question. I said, brother, you said the name of the Lord is this, that, and whatever. He said, yes. I said, brother, can you read that to me? And it was silence. Like the book says, silence in the heavens so it's mm -hmm. space half an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he went that long. <laughs> but it was some silence. Why? Because he uh -huh. couldn't do that. Well, brother, no, I can't read it in the book, but once he said, but that's when my ear turned off. Well, I can go on this here and this, that, and the rich. No, brother, read that in the book, what you say. The book says prove all things, so let's prove all things. So you got a lot of people, like I said, that I alluded to earlier, they want to try to tell you that the name Jesus means Zeus in the Greek language. So brother Eric can pull up that Google Translate page, the next slide. We did the work for you, sister and brothers. Not that one, brother. So that's the Latin. Pull up the one before that, the English to Greek. That's going to be the next one we're going to read, but the one right before that. It should say it's Jesus and Zeus. What we did, sister and brothers, while Eric's pulling it up, we did the research for you. We all got smartphones. We all got computers and tablets and whatever. So what we did is we went to Google Translate. If you go to Google Translate, you can put a, a name in the English column. And you can go to the next column and put the language that you want it to be translated into, and it will tell you what that name is. So, Eric, that's going to be our next slide, English to Latin. The one before that should say English to Greek, Google Translate. Because we want to show y'all, we want y'all to see this live and direct, what this name actually is. Because they'll say, well, Jesus means Zeus. 
Every time you call him Jesus, you call him Jesus. If you go into the original Greek, you're going to see the Greek word is Zeus. So Jesus is Zeus. And whenever you use that name, you call it on a pagan God. We're going to let y'all see this for yourself. So give us a few seconds. I want Eric to bring it up. Not that one, brother. Before that, it should say Google Translate English to Greek. So before the one that you showed the Latin, it should have just two words on there, Jesus and then Zeus. So Jesus and then Zeus. <laughs> I definitely want them to see this one because I want y'all to think I'm making anything up. It says Google Translate English to Greek. It should be right before the one that you showed the Latin man. Google Translate. One says Jesus, Zeus, and Earth Pig should be the one before that. So it says Jesus, man, Zeus. Y'all forgive me, sister and brother. We had the slides up, but the slides that I had wouldn't um, correlate into the stream yard. So we had to re-upload the slides, and they may have gotten out of order. So give us one second. I definitely want the brother Eric. Now, Eric, if you're looking at the screen, it looks like this one. Brother Eric, maybe I should show it to you. If you're looking at the screen. It's the one it looks like. Because I want y'all to see Jesus in the Greek. And I want y'all to see the word Zeus in the Greek. In fact, let's hold this up here. So y'all can see this. This is from googletranslate.com. We got Jesus in the English. We got Zeus in the English. And then we got the Greek word of Jesus, which is Iesus. And you got the Greek word of Zeus. Now, y'all smart enough. Y'all got some good eyesight, even though I got my glasses on. Do these look like the same word in Greek? These are two different words in Greek, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Different letters all together. Right. One is longer and one is smaller. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is Zeus in Greek, should they not be the same word? Mm -hmm. That's when you deal with people, what I call ghetto scholars or jailhouse scholars. They regurgitate stuff that they heard online, and instead of doing any kind of research, they just go with it and they make a whole doctrine out of it. No, it's just some brothers, you should not be doing that. Because the book says, prove all things. The Lord did not send them. Mm -hmm. But Eric, bring up that slide that you had before. But now mm -hmm. we want to go to the Latin. So you had that one up before. Jesus, Zeus, and Earth Pig. You could. Yes, sir. Let's bring that one up. But now once we prove that Jesus don't mean Zeus in the Greek, now they want to get on scholars and want to switch it up and say, well, mm -hmm. if you go to the Latin, Jesus means pig or Earth Pig. Because G and Jesus is the same as geo and earth, like geopolitical, mm -hmm. and sus means pig in Latin. So G, sus, is earth, pig. Well, let's see if that's the case. So y'all got the Google Translate on the screen right here. From English to Latin, you got Jesus is Isus. So the J becomes the I in Latin. Now we got Zeus in the uh, Latin. It's not even the same word. Mm -hmm. It's Jovem or Jovem, because they call him Job. So that Jesus and Zeus in Latin is two different words all together. Mm -hmm. And it's going to really uh, blow your dome. Look at earth pig. Because they say Jesus means earth pig. Mm -hmm. And in Latin, because I took Latin, mm -hmm. it means porcus terra or earth pig. As so we get the word pork from porcus, it's mm -hmm. earth pig. So sister and brothers, for all the ghetto jailhouse scholars out there that says Jesus means Zeus or earth pig, take them over to the Google Translate. Tell them to use a smartphone. Let them use their data. Don't use your own data. Save your data if you ain't got a limited data. Mm -hmm. Tell them type in Jesus. Tell them type in Zeus. And tell them go to the Greek. And tell them go to the Latin. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see that these are not the same words as the same brothers. So whoever teaches that, if you teach it after today, you are a known liar. If you taught it before then, maybe you didn't know, the Lord has some mercy. But now that the book says prove all things, and the book says all liars are going to find themselves in lake of fire, you better repent from that foolishness. If you don't like the name of Jesus, that's one thing, but don't mm -hmm. lie on it and say it means something that it don't mean. Mm -hmm. The Lord gonna judge us by every <clears throat> idle word. That's right. So I pray that makes sense, sister mm -hmm. and brothers. We got a few more here. Let's go to the back to the Bible. Let's go to Titus, the first chapter. Titus chapter one. Because again, you got to be meticulous with some of these brothers out here because it kills me, brother Tom Bone. The Gentiles, you got a few of them, but not too many kick against the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They may not like it, they might say Yahushua or whatever else. But they don't go hard and kick against it the way Israel does. And he's supposed to be the priest. And you go into the same Bible, the same KJV, same Deuteronomy 28, and you'll prove that that's us in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But then when it says Jesus in Matthew or it says Jehovah in Exodus, you got a problem with the J. So my question is, who is more important, you or the Lord? Mm -hmm. You don't think the Lord can uh, 
preserve his name in any language whatsoever? That's right. Come on. You didn't have to go to the Hebrew to find out slave ships. You saw you should be uh, in ships. Right. You should be sold as bond. Well, you understood that in English. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the name of the Lord, name of salvation, all of a sudden you want to get brand new and you want to go to the Strong's or Blue Letter or some other uh, mm -hmm. uh, dictionary or some other reference book. Why? Because you ain't got no faith, sister, brothers. You don't believe that the Lord can preserve his word in any language. Right. We'll read that moment, text. Right. Where we at, brothers? Titus, the first chapter. Yeah. Titus, chapter one. Verse 10. And verse 10. And grace and peace to all that has joined us online, whether on Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media page. Love each and every one of you all. Pray that you all are edified this Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Titus, chapter one, my beloved brother. And let's start this at verse number 10. Titus chapter 1 and verse number 10. In fact, read verse 9. We got to read 9. Go ahead. What does it say? Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Go ahead. That he may be able to, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So a man of the Lord is going to hold fast the faithful words as he mm -hmm. has been taught. Same thing Paul told Titus. He told Timothy, stick with what you know and what right. you've been taught. The yeah. Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. Why? Because by sound doctrine, you're going to both exhort and convince the gainsayers. Yes. So they're going to talk crazy. They're going to gainsay. They're going to uh, rebuke you. They're going to try to um, rebuff you and all that stuff. Book says stick with the book. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. You got many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially among who? Especially they of the circumcision. He put Jake on top of that list. Mm. It's Israel that's kicking against the name Jesus so bad that they yes. making up their own names. That's right. They going back to uh, to the internet and they reading names of other Gentiles. Mm. That name Yahushua, that's a recent name within the last twenty years. A Gentile made that name up. Mm. The name Yahushua that was made up back in the seventies in Harlem from one school. The name Ahia was made up in uh, 2020 by another brother, maybe twenty ten. By another brother that came by that school. All these names are That's recent right. names, sister and brothers are made up. Stick with what you can read in the book. Read 10 again for the people in the back. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Especially they of the circumcision. Go ahead, verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. Their mouths must be stopped. Go ahead. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. That's why they hate the name of Jesus, sister and brothers, because why? They can't get rich off of you selling you the KJV. You can get this for the dollar store. You can actually get this for free. But what they gonna say? Well, you know the name Jesus is the wrong name. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I got a Bible right here. They got Yahusha in it. They got Yahushua in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna charge you hundred dollars for that Bible. So now you can have the true name. Mm -hmm. They trying to get the money out your pocket, sister and brothers. Yet and still, when they teach, and they still teach you from the KJV, but they trying to sell you a Bible that costs a hundred dollars. And Lord willing, one day we gonna buy that Bible. And we're going to read it, and we're going to bust up all that bad doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's right. Verse number 13. This witness is true. This witness is true. Go ahead. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Rebuke them what? Rebuke them sharply. Go ahead. That they may be sound in the faith. And that's why we do a lesson like this, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. Rebuking them sharply in love, in the name of Jesus, praying that they receive it, that they mm -hmm. stop teaching all this bad doctrine. You don't like the name of Jesus? You don't like the name of Jehovah, that's between you and the Father. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to lie on it and say it means this, that, and the other, and it don't mean that, mm -hmm. we got to get you, sister and brothers, because we're dealing with what does say the Lord out of his book. One more place right here. Let's go to St. John, the 19th chapter, because we said names can be translated or transliterated in the English language. Don't believe us. Believe what you read out your own Bible. Because I ran into this dude who tried to tell me that names don't change in any language. Mm. So your name in this language is a name in any other language, which again, mm. makes no sense whatsoever. Because like I said, in the English, my name is Anthony or Tony, but you take it to the Spanish, it's Antonio. Mm. You take it to the French, it's Antoine. You take it to the German, it's Anton. Mm. So in any language, my name, or his name can be translated or transliterated, sister and brothers, if there is a similar name in that language. And with the name of Jesus, we see that there were similar names in that language. Mm. We're gonna look at that momentarily. Uh, St. John, the 19th chapter, mm -hmm. and Brother Tom Bone, this is when he was on the cross. Let's see what Pilate wrote on the cross. Let's start this in verse 16. We're going to read 16 through 20. St. John, the 19th chapter, my beloved brother. Let's read 16 through 20. When you get it, go ahead and read. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto them. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Jesus about to be led away and be crucified. Go ahead. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew 
Golgotha. So if you don't know what Golgotha means, the Bible just told you what it means, mm -hmm. the place of the soul. It yes. interprets itself, sister and brothers. Mm -hmm. So I follow up with the okie doke talking about we got to go and look at every word in the Strong's to understand the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Where they crucified him and two other with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. Now, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross of Jesus. And let's see what he wrote. Now, Pilate was a Roman, and the main uh, language of the Romans was Latin. Go ahead. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. He wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And what language did he write this in? Go ahead, verse 20. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. So this title read many of the Jews because our people were uh, bilingual and some of them spoke three languages. Go ahead. And it was written in Hebrew. So his name Jesus was written in Hebrew and Greek and Greek and Latin and Latin. So they try to lie and say that his name cannot be translated or transliterated in other languages. It was written in Hebrew. It was written in Greek and it was written in Latin. So let's go to this next slide, brother Eric. Again, the book says prove all things. Can you show, if you can, can these names be transliterated? Let's see if you have that slide, Eric. And then we'll go into. Okay, well, that's cool. For time's sake, we'll go there. So he said he wrote his name in uh, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The Hebrew is Yeshua. We read that earlier. Brother Tony read this before. Greek is Iesus. And the Latin is Isus. The next one after that. Yes, sir. So again, the Hebrew, okay, well, all right, Eric got me. Okay, go back to the previous page. Uh, we'll start with this. So this is my, no, go back to where you were. It's just that, Eric, with the king's name be transliterated. Yes, sir. So that's my question, because they're saying, well, his name is Yahshua. His mm -hmm. name is Yahawashia. Mm -hmm. His name is Yeshia. His name is Yahusha. His name is Yasha, whatever else they want to call it. My mm -hmm. question is, I ain't going to argue with that. If you say that's the Messiah, okay, cool. But my question is, if you say that that's his only name, can any of these names be transliterated in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. And I ran into one brother talking about, no, names can't be transliterated. Well, if your name is on this list and it can't be transliterated, it is not his name. Why? Now, if you could, Brother Eric, go to the next slide. So again, in the Hebrew, according to the reference that we read, it's Yeshua, Hebrew Aramaic. The Greek is Iesus. The Latin is Isus. So these are the three titles that, the names that Paul uh, Pilate wrote on his cross. And in the English, it goes down to Jesus. So, sister and brothers, names can transliterate or translate in any language if there's a, a similar name in that language. Now, how do we get from Yeshua to Jesus? Yeshua, you got the Y, but in the Greek and the Latin, there is no Y, so they make that the I. You keep the E, the SH in Yeshua becomes a hard S in Greek because there's no SH sound in the Greek language. So it comes Y E. SH becomes IES. You keep the U, all of them got the U, and at mm -hmm. the A at the end, the Greek and the Latin puts an S on the end of it. And if you took any language in high school, if you went in the bathroom smoking weed during a third period, you would know that the S is masculine singular. So that's how you come from Yeshua to Iesus to Isus to Jesus. Mm. And from Iesus to Isus, you come to Jesus. Hold off on that one, Eric. We ain't there yet. Appreciate that, brother. <laughs> but that's good. Now, let's see. Let's go to St. John, the fourth chapter. We got about two more scriptures after this. Three more scriptures. One more slide, and then we will close it out. And again, thank you, sister and brothers, for joining us. We are here at the Israel of God uh, Bible study class uh, in the UK, United Kingdom. I'm Tony P., guest teaching from my beloved brother, Mark. We can post our beloved brother, Tony, as well. Tony S., also known as Tone Bone. Let's go to St. John chapter 4, because people look at that list, and then all of a sudden they want to call themselves putting on thinking caps, and they'll say, well, Brother Tony, if you know what his true name is in Hebrew, shouldn't you be calling on that name? Well, let's see if Christ himself will answer to his name being called in different languages. Because if they tell that lie, if you call him Jesus, he don't know who you're talking about. Mm. Like Christ is dumb, he can't speak different languages. The book tells you that Christ spoke to a fig tree, and the fig tree dried up. Mm -hmm. Can't you speak fig, Negro? Mm -hmm. No, you can't. So if you can't speak fig, how are you going to tell me that Christ don't speak English? But I digress. No, I don't. <laughs> Let's go to uh, St. John chapter 4. I'm going to start this at verse 22. 
But it's when he met the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and he had to tell her what the deal was. Mm -hmm. Saint, four, Saint John 4 and 22. What does it say, brother? You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So salvation is of the Jews because he chose Israel to be the chosen priest of all the sons of Adam. But now we got to correct the priests because they messing this gospel up. Mm -hmm. But he says, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in, in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He didn't say the true worship is going to worship Father in the Hebrew tongue. Mm -hmm. He says if true worship is going to worship him in spirit and, and in truth. truth. That's what he's seeking. Verse 24. God is a spirit. So our Father God is a spirit. Go ahead. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I'm glad we got that there. He's a spirit. So stop tripping on the language. Mm -hmm. If you speak a different language that's not Hebrew, He's a spirit. He can hear you in any language. Mm -hmm. Just because y'all, so y'all think I'm not making that up? Read verse 25 and 26. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Now, uh, Brother Tom, mm -hmm. this conversation went over the head of all these brothers out mm -hmm. here and all these sisters speaking the name game. Mm -hmm. Because this woman at the well, the Samaritan, has some understanding. She said, I know when Messiah cometh. Messiah is a Hebrew word. She said, which is also called Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is a Greek word. Didn't uh, Pilate mm -hmm. write his name That's in Hebrew right. and Greek? Yes. She said, I know when Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he was come, he would tell us all things. Messiah is Hebrew. Christ is Greek. And they both mean the same thing, mm -hmm. anointed. So if you speak Hebrew, it's Messiah or Mashiach. If you speak Greek, it's Christ or Christos. They both mean the same thing, mm -hmm. anointed. So she says, when the anointed one is coming, I know he's going to uh, teach us all things. Now, let's see if Jesus rebuked this woman for having the nerve to call on his name in the Greek language. What did he say? Verse 26. Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Wait a minute. You mean Christ answered to his name in both Hebrew and Greek? Yes, mm -hmm. he did. So if somebody's telling you that the father don't hear any prayers in the English language, if you call the name Jesus and Jehovah in English, he's not listening. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes against what the Bible says. Read that again for the people in the back. Verse 26. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So Jesus answered to his name in both the Hebrew and the Greek, and he'll answer to it in any language, sister and brothers, because even in Spanish today, they call him Jesus, and that has nothing to do with Zeus, because we already didn't prove that. Let's go, if we could, brother, to St. John the ninth chapter. Two more scriptures, two more slides, and then we will close it out. St. John chapter 9. We'll put the St. John chapter 9. We want to read verse 31. St. John chapter 9, verse 31. So for all those people talking about the Lord don't hear you, if you call on his name in a language outside of Hebrew, let's see who the Lord does not hear. John 9 and 31. What does it say, brother? Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. It didn't say we don't we know that God don't mm -hmm. hear English speakers or Greek speakers or any other language. Mm -hmm. It says God does not hear sinners. But if you uh, worship God and you do with his will, him mm -hmm. will he hear. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my mm -hmm. commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, speak Hebrew, which is not even Hebrew. We got on this earth today. Mm -hmm. So God don't hear sinners, sister and brothers. And you can read that in Proverbs 28 chapter. Mm -hmm. Two more places to go real quick. Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. So we saw the name that the son came in. When he was in the flesh, the angel Gabriel gave it that name, the name of Jesus. Mm. Why did he come in that name? Uh, Philippians 2. We have one more after this. One more slide. We'll close it out. Mm -hmm. Philippians. Let us to Philippians chapter 2. If you could, Brother Tom, we'll start this at verse 5. We're going to be 5 through 11. When you get it, my beloved brother? Go ahead and read. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So he was in the form of the heavenly father because Isaiah 57 told us to inhabit eternity, but mm -hmm. he thought it not robbery to be equal with the Lord, but mm -hmm. he came in the flesh and took on the form of a servant and made no reputation of himself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. So he was obedient to the word of the Lord. He came and died for the sins of mankind. And look what the mm -hmm. Heavenly Father did because of that. Verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him 
and given him a name which is above every name. So the heavenly father exalted him and gave him a name which is above mm -hmm. every name, yes. including his own name. He didn't say every other name. Mm -hmm. He said he gave him a name above every name. What name did he give him? Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus. At the name of who? Of Jesus. We can read Jesus in the book. Now, mm -hmm. somebody might look at this and say, at the name of Yahweh Shai, Yahusha, Yahqua, whatever mm -hmm. else. We read this in the book. Start 10 again. That at the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Everything shall bow at the name of Jesus and brothers and mm -hmm. things in heaven, earth, and under the earth. Go ahead and read 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, if every tongue has to speak the same language, how are they going to all confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, sister mm -hmm. and brothers? Because you can understand that in each and every language under the sun. That's right. Period, point blank. And we read all this out the Bible in English and all of y'all understood it. Mm -hmm. And not once that I have to go and say, this means that, this means that, go to the Strongs, go to the Blue Letter, right. go to the Young's Literal Translation, whatever. We read it out the book that you all got in your hands. That's mm -hmm. how you know we're not hustling you. And we didn't ask you for not one red penny. Last scripture here, Matthew 24, two more slides, and then we will close it out. Matthew chapter 24, because again, you still got brothers that might be kicking, tell me his name is this, that, and whatever. We don't like the English, so we need to call this what they say is Hebrew name, whatever. Let's see how we know we still can deal with his name in English. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, my beloved brother. We want to read 3 through 5. Matthew 24, 3 through 5. Whenever you get it, go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. So they asked him what's going to happen, especially toward the latter days, which we are in right now. Four and five. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. And deception comes when the book is closed and they tell you to look at another source. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. So the man calling himself man of the Lord mm -hmm. is coming preaching with us, said the Lord. Make sure this book is open. Yes. Make sure they're reading this book and make sure you're reading right along with them. Once they close this book, they go into enemy territory. Yeah. And they're trying to get you cut off. Go ahead, verse number five. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. So hold on. He said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am what? Christ. He didn't say many shall come in my name, saying, I am Yahushua, mm -hmm. Yahqua, Yahweh Shai, this, that, and whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and do what? And shall deceive men. And shall deceive men. We got a couple more slides here, Brother Eric. If you can go... What is the name that all these folks is coming in to deceive me? Like I said, you, you got some people saying Yeshua, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, Yehuda, Yahqua, Yudei Wahe. All these other names that these folks got off the internet or everywhere else. If you, if you ten toes down with that name, my question is, then a whole lot of people should be deceived with that name. But if ain't nobody ever heard of that name, then that can't be the name that he said they're going to come in to deceive with. Exactly. What name they gonna come and deceive you with? It's a righteous name mm -hmm. that the Father gave him, but unfortunately, Satan's gonna use that name too. Put that back up if you could, Brother Eric. That's the name, sister and brothers. That's right. Even the name of Jesus. Yes. So, sister and brothers, that is a name that belongs to the Heavenly Father, because Christ said he came in his Father's name. Mm -hmm. That is the name that he gave the Son. When the Son came in the flesh, he told Gabriel to uh, tell Joseph to name the child that name, because Jesus means he will save people from his sin, because he is our Savior, he is our salvation. When he was in his heavenly glory with the heavenly father, he had the name Jehovah, I am, God Almighty, and all these other names. But the name that we have to be baptized in right now, sisters and brothers, for the salvation and remission of sins is the name of Jesus. So that answers the question. What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Mm -hmm. Even Jesus. Yes. So we thank you for your time, sisters and brothers. Again, we are the Israel God uh, UK class. My name is Tony P. from the ATL guest teaching today. Our reading was our beloved brother, Tom Bone. Our beloved brother Eric and ASAP were in the background. I thank you, brothers, for the good work that you all did. Grace and peace to our sister and brothers across the pond in the UK. I want to thank my beloved brother uh, Mark Azaria for giving me the opportunity to teach. It's always a blessing to stand before you teach with us, said the Lord. And without further ado, we want to go ahead and close it out. And again, we have a new uh, address. Let me go ahead and read that real quick. Uh, King Edward VI, Five Way School in Scotland. Uh, Lane, Battery Green, Birmingham. B32 or BT. We pray you all have a rest, blessed of the Sabbath. So we want to go ahead and stand face east toward Jerusalem. We will close it out. Everybody, brother.
Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a rest. Blessed the Sabbath, sisters and brothers across the pond in the UK. And for those over here in the USA, you have a rest of the blessed Sabbath as well, too, in your respective cities. We hope to see you all soon. Grace and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. No, no, that's good. It's very special. Yeah, yeah. I like this lesson. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Go ahead, go ahead. I got you. Thank you.